guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a plant pot collection. I will take you around my house and show you what kind of plant pots I have and what kind of plants I have housed in them. And I think that's such a fun part of this whole hobby is pairing different plants and pots together and finding creative ways to display your plants. For the most part, I have a lot of handmade ceramics from a lot of pottery artists as well as random planters from local boutiques or websites. I also have some really cheap finds from places like Ikea. I tend to go for neutral colors, earthy tones, and um, clean lines and interesting shapes. I am by no means perfect and I am always you know, changing things around and playing with different ideas and ways to make things look better. Um, but I will show you what I have going on right now. Right, Nabi? She's so sleepy. Let's go. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So we'll start over on this side. So right over here, I have my big McDowell that I really love. The newest leaf is really big and shiny. This is just in a Lechuza pond planter. So this is a self-watering planter. Um, it's their bigger one and obviously my plant's growing out of it quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to find a different solution pretty soon here, either repotting it into something bigger or maybe just making some cuts. Here's my Philodendron UPI. This one is in a cute little planter that's round and chubby with feet. This is from Clay Ceramics. Above the UPI, I have my Philodendron Billetier and that one is in a clear nursery pot. It's actually an orchid pot, which is why there's so much aeration. It doesn't exactly fit into this white planter perfectly. Um, I should probably cut off the top a little bit, but I was too lazy, so I left it. And that's what it looks like. The brass shells from CB2. And so on the right side over here, I have my Anthurium polyiflorum, which is such a gorgeous strappy Anthurium. And I have that in this clear nursery pot. And that is sitting in a round planter. It's a ceramic planter just from Indigo, which is a bookstore here in Canada. And then beside that, I have my Marble Queen Pothos. And this one is in just a round ceramic pot uh, from a local nursery. This gorgeous Hoya, everyone loves this one. This is one of my favorites. This is my Hoya Hushkeliana. It needs to be watered, it looks like. But that's what it looks like, and it's in a cute little clay planter. Back here again, it's in a little nursery pot, um, and it just trails like that. You can't really see it, but it's a really cute pot, I like it. Um, and I got that from the States actually from Pistil's Nursery. And beside that, I have my Hoya Obovara. It's a little bit covered by this other big leaf here, but we'll just <laughs> move that for now. So this is what it looks like, gorgeous. And it's in a cute clay planter from Sombra LA. And so you'll see that not all of my um, nursery pots fit my planters perfectly, but a lot of times like the foliage will cover the part that doesn't fit, so it doesn't really matter at all. Above that, I have this marbled clay planter with a tiny little micans in it. So I used to have a large micans, but it got thrips and then I just didn't want to deal with it. So I gave it away for free to somebody local. So this is all I got left. Uh, but this planter is from Marg Ceramics. She's also based in the States. Beside that, I just have my Philodendron Patriciae sitting in a little self-watering planter. It's not the best looking planter, so I think in the future I will get like a cover pot for it. Um, so it's not just this random plastic planter among the other beautiful ones over here. Beside that philodendron, we have a Mandula pothos, which is draping beautifully. And it is in a beautiful planter by Solarium Studios. So yes, this is a planter that I made myself. And um, yeah, I really like how speckled and wavy it is. And um, I like that wavy dripping effect as well. It's almost like ice cream melting. So that's it for that shelf. 
Right beside the shelf on the left, we have my philodendron glorious. So this is my tallest plant, I think. Um, and it's just so stunning. And not all the leaves face um, towards the front, which is why you can't see them all. I've kind of let them do what they want to do. And I actually just have this guy in another little self-watering planter. This is from Amazon and I'll have the links in the description. And I actually have it just sitting on another bubbly planter from, I think I got that from Simon's, which is a department store here in Canada, just to give it a little bit more height so that these leaves can get some sun from that window there. Right beside that, I have one of my favorite planters. I think this is one of my most unique planters probably. This is from Meepa's Pots and Plants. She is based in LA, I believe. And I have a little Hoya Linearis coming out of it. I got the idea to put this plant in here from Benji Plants. And uh, where I think he has a lot more of this Hoya in there, like it's more lush, but he has it in the same planter and it's just so cute. Beside that UFO, I have my Hoya Crimson Queen. Look at that. It's such a lush Hoya and really low maintenance as well. And I absolutely love it. So this is in a brass planter uh, from Amazon. Beside that, I have a little Peperomia Hope in this straw planter. This hanging planter is from H&M. And this, my Birds of Paradise is getting a little bit too big and kind of covering that plant when you look from the back, but that's where that is. It is in this planter from West Elm, if you can see that. And it's just a very basic planter, um, but these large planters, I think this one's like 14 or 15 inches, are so, so expensive. I really don't think they're worth the price, but it's really hard to find a beautiful big planter these days, so... That's what I have over there. It's just very neutral. It looks kind of like stoneware, which is really nice. I like the texture of it. Here's my Philodendron Gloriosum. This is a Gloriosum Zebra. And it is, I think it's two different cuttings sitting in this uh, off-white planter. I got it from a local nursery called Botanifal. Again, I feel like the options are really limited when it comes to big plants. So they're just both cylindrical. I couldn't find anything better um, that was affordable. Moving over here, I have my Philodendron 60s, which is such a unique and cute plant. It's very similar to the UPI, but a little bit different as well. Um, the lobes are definitely longer and bigger on this one. So this one is just sitting in another random planter from a local nursery. I actually don't remember exactly which nursery bought this from, but um, yeah, I just have a nursery pot sitting in it. And this plant stand is from HomeSense, which is like a Marshalls here in Canada. And here is my Philodendron SP Columbia. It is a gorgeous plant. It hasn't been growing lately, um, so it's struggling a little bit, but it is currently in the Naked Root Planter. And I got that sent to me, so I'm just trying it out to see if it helps my plant to survive. Because this plant has been struggling for like a year since I cut it, and it just hasn't grown at all. Moving on to this little coffee table here. I wish I didn't need to put that table there. I think it would all look better without it, but I just don't have a lot of natural room in this house. And so this is the only place for now. And so this is what I mean when I say everything's kind of a work in progress, but um, I'll show you what plants I have here. So this is a Syngonian Chia Pence and I have it in another beautiful creation by Sombra Le. I love that tan speckled clay. I think that's such a beautiful color and texture, very earthy. And then behind that, I have my Monstera Thai Constellation. And it is just in a self-watering planter with pond. And of course, in front of that, I have my other Thai Constellation. I should probably get rid of one of them. Um, but yeah, it's sitting in this anthropology plot. with a bunch of leaves on it. So that one's in another cute planter from Anthropology that comes with the saucer. Beside my Florida Ghost, I have my very large Anthurium Vichii. And this one is in another nursery pot. 
and it's just in like a very generic orange terracotta colored planter this one again is from the store called plant from calgary alberta it's such a humongo plant. And in front of that, I just have my Scandapsis Jade Satin, which needs to be watered um, in kind of another generic terracotta pot there. To the left, I have this cart from Ikea. And on top of the Ikea, I have a couple of plants. So this is my Philodendron Florida Beauty. And it's currently residing in this clay ceramics planter right over here. And I have it in the white speckled color. And this is the orbital planter, I believe. And it's just so beautiful. I love the unique shape and the pedestal that's a part of it. Just gorgeous. Beside that, I have another little orbital planter, but this is the smaller version in the tan speckle. And again, this is from Clay Ceramics as well. And it has my philodendron burl marks in it. Beside those beauties, I have this <laughs> random little glass cloche and it has a bunch of pings in it. And I believe I got this cloche from H&M, which is a clothing store, but they now also sell home goods as well. Below that, I have some anthuriums and a philodendron gloriosum. So this is a gloriosum dark form. It looks a little bit different than the other one that I have. And it's just unfurling a new leaf. And I have this in just a clear planter. Actually, it's not even really a planter. It's just a rectangular acrylic box and I drilled some holes at the bottom and I got this from Wayfair. Beside that I have my Anthurium Bessier which is growing a new leaf and this is in a ceramic planter. It's just a generic one from my local nursery called Botanifal. And here I have a little Ikea planter. It's a little dirty. <laughs> But um, this is a really cheap planter. I believe it's made of plastic. Beside those guys, I have a bunch of Hoyas and a random pink princess. This planter is from Simon's and I just put a little nursery pot of my Hoya Serpent Splash in there because it likes to trail a lot. Beside that, I have a little terracotta planter from Yum Yum Ceramics with my Hoya Matilda splash with silver in it. And then beside that, you can tell I'm running out of room. I just don't know where to put anything now. Um, but this is my Hoya Pandurata sitting in just like a generic white little planter from Botanifal as well. In front of that is a little rectangle planter that I made um, when I first started my ceramic classes and of course my polymura silver is sitting in there. It got root rot for a little while so that's why some of the leaves look a little bit janky um, but it's very happy now and throwing out a lot of new leaves and new branches so that's good. We got two more left here so this is my Hoya Wilbur Grave Silver and it's just sitting in again another kind of generic fluted planter. It's a ceramic planter from Botanifal. And in front of that is my white princess. It's just sitting in, again, another cheap planter from Ikea. I have a little trailing Cebu Blue Pothos on top of this Millsbo cabinet. And it's just sitting in this bubbly planter from Simon's. In terms of my Millsbo cabinets, I mean, there isn't much to say about the planters in there because a lot of them are the Amazon self-watering planters that you've seen already or the IKEA steps planter, like this one that you've seen already. So a lot of them are kind of in the same situation. And the reason for that is that I just like that clean, sleek, minimalistic look with my cabinets. So I just keep it quite clean looking. Same with this Millsbo Wide. Most of the plants are just in little white planters or just generic ones. Again, this one, that doesn't fit my nursery pot for my Hoya um, Nova Ghost is from Simon's. 
This is from Ikea, lots of self-watering planters. Um, this is another random ceramic planter, I think, from Ikea. And yeah, there's not too much to say about these. So on the very left here, I have my Philanthus Mirabellis sitting in another self-watering planter, but this is a terracotta one. And I find that uh, my codex plants do really, really well in these terracotta planters. So I have a couple of them in this. You'll see this again a little bit later. But this is just from Amazon, and I'll again put the link below. This is another terracotta planter. This is from Studio Arhodge, I believe. And um, yeah, I just got it from actually a clothing store called End here in Canada. But I know this one is really popular, so a lot of people have it. Next to that, I have another terracotta planter. This is from Front Range Clay by Eric Flanagan. I love the flower shape. I think it's just so adorable and unique. And again, as with all terracotta pots, it is moisture wicking. So it's great for plants that like to not stay moist for too long. And my Dion at Jewel is living in that right now. This is the newest leaf. Beside that is one of my absolute favorite planters of all time. This is from Mipa's Pots and Plants. So the same person that made that UFO planter from earlier. And it's just such a gorgeous shape. And the craftsmanship is just lovely, wonderful, beautiful. I just absolutely love it. It comes with that pedestal as well. And this is currently housing my variegated money tree. And I think it's quite happy in there. And there's a new leaf. Beside that, I have a couple of my own creations again. So these are from Solarium Studios. I was playing with some lines and some checker patterns, as you can see. And these are a couple of my Adenia plants in here. Behind those, I just have a generic white planter with my Hoya Sestiantha in it. This is one of my messiest looking plants and it's something that I'm hoping to I don't know change sometime soon just because it's just not very pleasing to the eye it's very messy looking but um i'm just letting it grow for now and we'll see what happens later beside that i have my hoya new guinea ghost in another one of my favorites so this is by umlaut ceramics i believe and it has that like asymmetrical top that i really like those waves are so so cute and gorgeous And another kind of generic planter from a local nursery. I believe this one was from Lace and Leaves in Edmonton. And this is a six inch planter housing my little Clarinervium at the moment. And right beside that, we have another generic planter. This one is from Urban Outfitters. They actually have a lot of pretty cute planters, at least recently. Um, and this is my Paraiso Verde, which has definitely reverted and is not looking the most beautiful, but kind of growing on me actually. So moving on to my other window, I have several plants here and three little snake plants here by the coffee table. So let's start off with the snake plants. So this plant over here, it's a Cleopatra snake plant and it is in a planter that I got from Arian Botanicals in the US. And the person that made it is called Totally Shapes. Or that's the um, ceramicist's name. And then this other one that I have right beside it is from Ami Ceramics and I believe she's based in Vancouver or BC. So that's what that looks like. And then this other little snake plant here has a cute little slightly pink planter. It's a little flat. I made that one myself. Moving on to this window. Let's start on the right and we'll move our way to the left. So this planter right over here is actually a self-watering planter from Lechuza. Looks like I need to refill the water. Um, but basically I have my Alocasia stingray in some pond and that just makes watering so much easier for me, especially for Alocasias who can be kind of finicky. So that's thriving over there in that corner. And it's just like a tall planter. It's rectangular. Unfortunately, the options are really limited in terms of like aesthetic self-watering planters. So 
Um, basically, I just try to get something that looks clean and simple. On the right side here, I have my white ghost cactus and it's in a big steps planter by Front Range Clay. And I love that it's terracotta, so it's uh, moisture wicking, but it's white. So that's really cool. And the saucer I got from Indigo, which again is at bookstore in Canada. And then right in front of that, I have a little nursery pot in a planter from Sombra LA. Gorgeous curvy shapes. I'll also mention that these trellises that I use for my Hoyas, in case anyone's interested, are from Plants and Glitters. That's a um, company based in Alberta here in Canada. I believe they're in Grand Prairie specifically, and they sh I think they ship worldwide or at least Canada-wide. In front of that, I have a planter by Yum Yum Ceramics, and you'll see that I have a bunch of planters from Yum Yum Ceramics by this window in particular. But that is my um, spiral cactus. And beside that, I have another planter by Ami Ceramics. It's like a speckled tan color, and I really like how um, cylindrical it is and how neutral it is. And then I have this absolute cutie from Front Range uh, Clay as well. It's like a little bloom planter. It's like a little flower. It's adorable. And again, it's moisture wicking, so it's great for succulents and hoyas and things like that. And I have actually another one right here um, that is a terracotta color. And I really, really like this planter. It's super tiny, so it's great for your tiny little succulents or, um, you know, other similar desert plants. And then over here in the middle, we have a little egg kind of looking planter that again, I made. It's one of the first creations that I made in my pottery class. And on the edge here, I have another planter from Chapters. Um, just very simple cylinder shape. And then at the end, I have just a random planter from a local nursery. I think that's from Lace and Leaves as well. On the other side of the table here, we have another creation by Meepa's Pots and Plants. This is more suitable for like codex plants, but I really wanted to try a succulent in there. And so that's what it looks like. Right there, I have a wrinkly succulent that I haven't been watering regularly, unfortunately, but that's another creation from Yum Yum Ceramics. And I love that shape. It's like geometric, but curvy at the same time. Right behind that, I have a planter. Um, that's another terracotta one. It's very curvy and has a small saucer, which is adorable. And it's from a ceramicist based in New York. Um, I believe her name is Michiko Shimada. And then beside that, I have a little planter that I got from Simon's, which is again, a department store near here. Um, this one in particular is a Hasami porcelain planter. So um, it's Japanese. And again, like I'm sure you've noticed, I like speckled clays. I like neutral tan clays. I like whites. I like a lot of neutral colors that kind of go together and look a little earthy. So yeah, I love this one. Next to that, I actually have a little nursery planter because I haven't been able to, you know, make or find a little planter for this guy yet. Um, but this plant is from Crystal Star Nursery and yeah, it's been in there for a little while now. Hopefully we'll be able to find the perfect pot for it soon. Next to that, I have another planter that I made in my ceramics class. This was actually one of the very first ones I've ever made, so it's a little rough around the edges, but I think it's still pretty adorable. Next to that, we have another beautiful, gorgeous green pot. This is like a limey, light limey kind of color, and I absolutely love it. Um, this is also by Front Range Clay, and the cool thing about this one is that it stacks with the saucer. So if you lift up, the bottom step is actually the saucer, and it stacks perfectly. Beautiful. Oops, I almost forgot to talk about this guy. So my Stefania Kawasaki is in a little self-watering planter. It's a little dirty right now, I'll have to wash that. But um, yeah, it's the same one as the other one that you saw um, with my Philanthus Mirabellus in it. But it works really well for codex plants, so I love that. 
And then last but not least, I have this little cactus here. And I got it as a gift from one of my friends, so I'm not sure exactly where she got it from, but um, it's supposedly made out of like recycled materials, I think. So down here I have more sun-loving plants, and um, because it's the bottom shelf, it sometimes lacks a lot of light. So I added a little barina light up here, and let's go through these plants. Starting on the right side here, I have my philodendron white lizard sitting in this very like simple, elegant terracotta planter from EQ3. Uh, typically, I do not like putting my aeroids in terracotta planters, again, because they're so moisture wicking, it sometimes dries out a little bit too much. So I actually have it in a little nursery pot that fits perfectly into this terracotta planter somehow. So satisfying when it fits perfectly like that. On the left of that, I have my Ficus Pediolaris, I believe, um, and it's sitting in a little planter that I made in my pottery class. Beside that, I have another planter that I made in my pottery class. It was um, one that I made kind of at the beginning of my pottery journey, if you will, so it's a little messy looking, but I think it's still very, very cute. And here... Hey, Mabby. She needs attention. You want some belly rubs? No, that was a trap. Okay, moving on. So this planter here, um, again, is from Front Range Clay. He just makes some of the most beautiful little terracotta planters I've seen around. So that's a perfect one for my Albuca Spiralis. Next to that, I have another cute little planter from Yum Yum Ceramics. Again, he is also one of my favorites as well for terracotta planters. And it is housing my little Discoria elephant types. Beside that, I have a cute wavy planter from From Tree to Sea. And it's actually a little bit nostalgic because this is the first ceramic artist piece or ceramic artist uh, planter that I've ever bought. I think it was about, um, I want to say like two and a half, three years ago that I got this planter. And From Tree to Sea um, is made by Lauren. She's a ceramic artist and she's based in Calgary, Alberta in Canada. And I believe she ships worldwide as well. Beside that, I have a white and kind of large polka dot planter from Wavy Studio Co. And they kindly sent this to me on Instagram and it is currently housing one of my big leaf Hoyas. And it's such a cute planter. I really like it. And it's like right down my alley because it's speckled, it's neutral, it has some exposed clay. Absolutely love. Um, this is... <laughs> Uh, okay, so this plant is the same one as the one you saw over here. So what is it called? Like Conophyllum cono, cono bilobum. So it's the same plant, but this is my redemption plant because I clearly killed the first one. Um, this one came to me in not the best condition though, and I tried to save it, but clearly it's just not having it. Um, but yeah, this is another little bloom planter from uh, Front Range Clay. Beside that, I have a little cloche. This cloche, I believe I got from Simon's again, that Canadian department store I was talking about. And it has a bunch of pings in it. Um, so for a while, my pings were suffering because I put it in too much grow light. I put it right under like a really, really strong grow light and it um, shriveled up a bit and the moss got yellow and everything. But now it's coming back to life. This one is suffering still, but um, the others look okay, and yeah, I think it's um, definitely starting to recover, so I'm very glad that's happening. You live and you learn, and yeah, I really like this cloche because it has a ventilation hole, so you don't have to open it every day to make sure that there's some ventilation in there, and you can just plant things right into it, like a terrarium situation. This is another one from From Tree to Sea by Lauren in Calgary. And it's also one of my most beautiful planters, I think, because it's a piece of artwork, right? Like it has these tigers on it and some blooms. I absolutely love it. And last but not least, I have this planter from Korai Goods and she's based in the US. And she makes little terracotta planters with feet. So this one has like pointy little feet, adorable. 
and it has my Hoya Crassy Petulata in it. Beside the shelf, I have a big planter uh, from West Elm and it is housing my Monstera. It's really hard to find nice big planters, so when this went on sale, I had to grab it. Beside that Monstera plant and the West Elm pot, I have another West Elm pot that's a little bit bigger and it is currently housing a nursery pot with my palm tree in it. This is my spindle palm tree. And um, yeah, the um, bulbous base, it doesn't really show when I kind of zoom out a little bit, which I don't like. So I would like to have the planter a little bit higher in the pot. Um, and I did do that for a while, but it was a little unstable. So I just let it sit back down to the base, but that's what it looks like. I love the shape of this planter and it has some texture on it as well that I absolutely love. And yeah, my palm tree is quite happy in there. Moving up here, I have a planter that I got as a gift. I believe it's from Angus and Celeste, um, and they sell a lot of really cute, unique planters, and it's housing my variegated Boston fern right now. And right in front of it, it's hidden, but there's another planter there. Um, this one I just got from that plant shop in Calgary called Plant, another little hanging planter. And again, a very neutral color as well. On the right side, I have a couple of hanging planters that I made myself. So this one is one that I made. It's quite bubbly and wavy, and I love that it fits this nursery pot just perfectly. It just fits like a dream. So absolutely love that. Um, and yeah, it's one of the only two pieces remaining from that last batch that I made in my collection. And then this one is another one that I've made. So it's like a nude, raw, speckled clay. Um, and then the inside is glazed white, but it is housing my monkey tail cactus currently. And again, if you haven't noticed, I love how wavy and speckled and neutral it is. That speckle just gives it a little bit of extra texture and interest. Um, and it kind of sparkles in the sun too, as you'll see right over here. So absolutely love that. Lastly, I have this little hanging planter that uh, my friend gifted to me. I'm not sure where it's from actually. I think she got it from Etsy somewhere. Um, but yeah, it has my little string of pearls. My last plant in this area is this neon pothos that lives next to the palm tree, kind of by the mirror here. And it is a neon pothos just sitting in a plastic nursery pot um, in a big terracotta cash pot. And I got this round terracotta planter from Botanifal, that uh, local nursery store. So beside that window, I have another window facing the same direction. So this window is also facing east and I have a couple more plants here. This one on the left is a Calathea White Star and that white clay planter I got from a nursery that's local to me called Greenland. And then the one on the right is another find from West Elm. And that's what they look like. Moving on to this wall, I have my Hoya cabinet over here. Again, I'm not really gonna go over that because I don't have a lot of beautiful pots or anything in there. It's mostly the Ikea step ones and then the self-watering planters. So we'll go on to this side instead. So on this little shelf, I have a couple of plants and a little mirror. Here is another front range clay planter. It's a terracotta one. And beside that, I have one of those <laughs> kind of sleek but ugly self-watering planters. I really do want to switch this one out, but it's just thriving in there right now. This is my Hoya Lacunosa Luisa Silver. So we'll just leave it in there for now. This is an old terracotta planter, um, as you can tell. And it has my watermelon Deschidia in it. And here we have some Hoya cuttings that I'm currently rooting in the cloche. And the reason why I put it in a cloche is because it really increases the humidity, which helps them root faster in my experience. Beside that, I just have a little cutting in a little glass, domed little glass uh, vase. And this is from H&M 
home and then we have another Kurai Goods planter but it's obviously not fitting my nursery pot properly but it's just what I have for now and so I have a little clear nursery pot in there with my thematophyllum. Underneath that I have a couple of orchids in cute little pots that match the flowers. So on the left I have a pink orchid, it's just a common orchid. I got it as a gift from a student uh, that was doing a clinical placement where I work in my hospital. And it's currently in this gorgeous pink planter that I got from Urban Outfitters. And I love how like architectural it is and I love the texture of it. And I think of course the pink goes really well with the pink flowers on this guy. And then on the right I have a white orchid. Again, just a common orchid and it's in a nursery pot in this planter from Indigo. And the planter uh, saucer is also from Indigo as well. So that's what those look like. And then beside that, I have an Alocasia Friedeck. Again, it's in a self-watering planter because I have trouble um, figuring out the correct watering for Alocasias because they are very thirsty, but they also get root rot quite easily. So I prefer to have them in these. And beside that, I have another orchid actually that's just not blooming right now. Um, this usually has a bunch of yellow flowers. So this guy is in a planter by Verity Co. And I love the color of it. It's like made from a bamboo material. It doesn't fit the saucer perfectly, so it's always kind of wobbly, as you can see. Um, but it looks really cute otherwise. Beside that, I have another little um, speckled clay planter from, from Tree to Sea in Calgary and I just have a little mandula on it and the saucer is just one that I made myself. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And if you want to follow me on my pottery journey, you can follow me right over here. I will be making more planters if you're interested. Again, give me a little follow. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.